first off, I want to know who at Baylor isn't testing their players properly. What is what? What are these Baylor players out there doing? Huh? What are they doing out there? Because we get robbed to see Chuba Hubbard run all over the Baylor defense on Saturday night. I mean, obviously there's something else big going on on Saturday too, but um, I am quite disappointed that Baylor has moved this game to December. Hell, I'm worried that we're not, not even going to play Baylor next week. Um, the week after this one. And I'm talking about my Longhorns who are off this week. Um, but yeah. So, college football week number seven. I was unsure for a second there. <laughs> yeah, week number seven in college football is here. And we have some delicious, nutritious football treats for you all this week. In fact, it starts on Wednesday night. So you have football all week this week, considered it's a Tuesday night game. We'll talk about that probably Wednesday, I guess, uh, with the NFL anyway. Uh, but we have, you know, some Sunbelt matchups, especially with Louisiana and Coastal Carolina. Both those teams, I believe, are still undefeated. I'm not sure. Um, but I'm, not, I'm probably not going to be watching the game. I'm not going to lie to you. Thursday night, Georgia State, Arkansas State should be interesting. And then, you know, the American gets highlighted on Friday. SMU undefeated, still taking on Tulane. And BYU also undefeated and ranked, taking on Houston. Both SMU and BYU are undefeated and should be interesting to see how those two teams keep rolling. Because, boy, those two teams can play. But then we start off our Saturday slate, and honestly, you know, I, 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 I'm kind of apprehensive about talking about Clemson again because I think they're just going to dominate until, you know, they get to Notre Dame. Who will probably be their toughest competition? Maybe the ACC championship against probably North Carolina. And yeah, it's kind of boring to talk about Clemson. They're playing against Georgia Tech, um, so there's nothing really to talk about there. Auburn's also playing at that same time, playing in South Carolina. But it's South Carolina. Who cares about South Carolina? Auburn. If you don't take care of business, in fact, Auburn should have lost on Saturday. But you know. Can't have that. Can't have that. Meanwhile, um, the real meat of the um, noon block, the real team I want to talk about is the number eight team in the country. The Cincinnati Bearcats, baby. And they are taking on Tulsa, who, if you don't remember, Tulsa beat UCF a couple weeks back. Could play spoiler at home. Cincinnati has to travel all the way down to Tulsa. And it's been a it's been kind of quiet, you know, over here on this front, you know, talking about the American aside from a couple times like in passing. But Cincinnati is a real interesting team. I assume that they are still you know, they had a dominant defense last year. They probably still have a dominant defense this year. It's a fact that I think they shut somebody out. I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But Cincinnati is a very interesting team. And I'll get to see them for the first time this Saturday. And I think this will be the only game I watch in the noon window. Not going to lie to you. There's a couple other games that look interesting. You know, like Kentucky, Tennessee, Pitt, Miami. But, um, you know, I mean, it's Pitt. They, they lost. Miami got blown out, showing that, you know, Miami is not back. So, Tennessee also got basically blown out in the second half against Georgia. So, we'll see how that goes. Kentucky's pretty tough, though. But, yeah, keep your eyes on the number eight team of the country, the Cincinnati Bearcats. I know I will. I don't know what else. I don't know what else I'm going to watch during that time. But, you know, should be interesting at that time. And again, 
as far as the America goes. Got another goodie. Memphis, UCF. They've had some classic, classic matchups in the past, especially in the in the conference championships a couple years back. In fact, like two or three times they faced off in the conference championship. And that's going head to head with LSU Florida. Um, at LSU Florida, both teams have just god awful defenses. It is just rough, rough to watch those two defenses in motion. But Kyle Trask, if he gets it rolling the pits of Tony, I'm telling you, it's going to be over. LSU, I mean, Florida can play a little defense at times, and so can LSU, but I mean, it's just like LSU lost to Missouri. Like, they lost to Missouri and Mississippi State. So, like, okay. And Florida, on, on the other hand, you know, they lost Texas A&M. That's a, that's a much more respectable loss. Very, very respectable loss. Like, I could, I mean, even though A&M is okay, you know, they're just there. And that's not, that's not just me hating on A&M. But it's just like, okay, it's Texas A&M. What am I supposed to say about them? Like, it's the same stuff every year but at them, especially Jimbo now. That's that's not what I'm here to talk about. LSU, Florida, UCF, Memphis, the 3.30, 2.30 window should be two interesting games. Um, what else is on here for that same time? Yeah, Texas A&M taking on Mississippi State. That's, a, that's a, about 30 minutes later, though. Um, yeah. But yeah, just keep your eyes on those two games at the very least. Dylan Gabriel, Brady, Brady White, you know, UCF, Memphis, and then, you know, interesting quarterback battle and defensive. Whoever, I guess, whoever gets the 60 wins at LSU, Florida. <laughs> Probably. Looking like the Big 12 out here. And unfortunately, since, you know, Oklahoma State Baylor got canceled, we now got a Watch Florida State in prime time again, and I mean, who cares about Florida State, and North Carolina? Just go out there, and take care of business. Just go out there, and take care of business. I know the running backs in the backfield are itching to get at Florida State's, you know, bad defense. I know Sam Howell's about to run it wild on the Seminoles. That's it. That's at seven thirty, six thirty. But the real meat on the table, the real feast that we get to, I don't know, we're probably, I don't know, SEC fans probably going to whine about Gary Danielson for five hours or something like that, even though all college football games take four hours, but for some reason everybody just kind of puts the hush us on CBS for whatever reason, That that's just, that's just facts, like all college football games take four hours now. Like, it's not even a joke anymore. But yeah, number three, Georgia taking on number two, Alabama. Seven o'clock or eight o'clock if you live on the East Coast. Whew, Alabama's defense is not the greatest, but they do have Najee Harris. They do have Najee Harris in the backfield. Boy, that man can run. Georgia, you know, they're just trying. They still have a strong running game. It's the same stuff that, you know, you can say about Georgia. That's been the case for years now. Strong running game, quarterback that can do just enough in Stetson Bennett, and the defense. Boy, that defense can be suffocated. They have, you know, they, you know, they made some mistakes in that first half against Tennessee, but, you know, they put the clamps. They put the clamps on Guantanamo in the second half. Three turnovers. If, if, if they force Mac Jones to, to, to they force Mac Jones to get out the pocket and stuff like that, and, you know, they have him in like a man-to-man zone defense or something like that, and, you know, nobody's open, I'm thinking it's going to be a long day. It could be a long day for Mac Jones, or a long night, rather. He might be on the ground like five times if the Georgia defense could get to him. The defense line, strong, powerful, beautiful, beautiful defense. But Alabama's defense is, well, it's something. It's certainly something. But, yeah, 
it's going to be one hell of a matchup. The top the top three teams in the country, you know, two of the top three in the country playing in prime time. Man. Man, oh, man, oh, man. But I'm seriously salty about Oklahoma State, though. I wanted to see that in prime time. But whatever. Whatever. But, yeah, week seven should be interesting. And then when we get the ball rolling even more, when week eight comes and the Big Ten invades our homes again, along with the Mountain West, too. But, you know, next week is going to be very, very interesting. The schedules have already been built for, for week eight. Stuff like that. And TV times and stuff should be available to all of us now. But yeah, week eight is going to be interesting. But this week, this week seven, it should provide us with a lot of storylines as well. Especially, you know, who is going to stay in the playoff race between Georgia and Alabama. Because I don't, I don't know if Alabama has everything that they need to stay in it. If you got to get that defense together, if Georgia, if Georgia can get enough offense flowing, then I think it might be a long night for Alabama's defense. But, but just in case, you know, if Alabama gets going and starts rolling like they usually do, it's gonna be a long night for Georgia. So, that being said, y'all take care, like, comment, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. Y'all take care. Have a good day.